One pack of camel lights, please. And a scratcher. And a playgirl. ID. Hey, this is Desiree for In Retrospect, a series where we take another look at a film to see if a new picture emerges. And today we're looking at Lady Bird, Greta Gerwig's solo directorial debut. To be honest, maybe it was all the hype, the ways people talked about Lady Bird, like it reinvented the girl teen movie, or maybe it was the fact that it was another example of complicated but celebrated white girlhood. But the first time I saw Lady Bird, I found it a little underwhelming. I just wanted it to be special. But I couldn't ignore the fact that I'd already seen and loved this complex mother-daughter dynamic in Patricia Cardoza's brilliant and funny adaptation of the play, Real Women Have Curves. This is my mom. Is this your daughter? Anna is a smart, ambitious teenager, and the film explores her fraught relationship with her overbearing mother, Carmen, who feels threatened by Anna's college dreams. This film, much like Lady Bird, shows its protagonist fighting with her mother and making important decisions about her body and her future. Ana tiene algo que decirte. The parallels even include Carmen refusing to say goodbye to Ana when she leaves for college. Mama, I'm going now. But after seeing film critic Hunter Harris's one woman campaign to celebrate all things Lady Bird, I just felt like maybe I'd missed something. So Gerwig talks about the film being a portrait of a modern day saint in the making. Christine McPherson is a high school senior who changes her name to assert her independence and blaze her own trail. Lady Bird. Is that your given name? Yeah. Why is it in quote? Well, I gave it to myself. It's given to me by me. Lady Bird dreams of going to an elite East Coast college far away from home. The only problem is her parents can't afford the tuition. Your father's company is laying off people right and left. Did you even know that? No, of course you don't, because you don't think about anybody but yourself. And well, Lady Bird's grades just aren't that great. <laughs> you definitely couldn't get in. Lady Bird's college dreams and rejection of her lower middle class roots drive the conflict with her mother, Marion. You think your dad and I don't know how ashamed that you are of us? Your dad knows. Your dad knows why you ask him to drop you off a block away from school every day. Dad, I didn't mean to. You made him feel horrible. They're barbs. Well, I highly doubt that you will be able to get a job good enough to do that. Unintended slights and passive aggressive behavior. You can't walk up to the gates anymore anyway. Yeah, but I'm going to college capture the ups and downs of most mother-daughter relationships on screen. But then I saw something that changed my whole understanding of the film. There's this moment when Lady Bird and Sister Sarah Joan discuss Lady Bird's college essay and her love for Sacramento. Well, I was just describing it. Well, it comes across as love. I guess I pay attention. Don't you think maybe they are the same thing? This connection between love and attention is the film's core idea. This idea seems to draw on the French philosopher Simone Weil's characterization of attention as a kind of meditation that frees you from the limitations of your perspective so you can see others and the world more clearly. The British moral philosopher and novelist Iris Murdoch incorporated this idea of attention into her notion of the loving gaze which is also called a just and loving way of seeing. For Murdoch, this form of attention helps you see and accept others for who they really are. Here are three instances when the film uses a loving gaze. The film gives equal attention to Lady Bird's weaknesses and strengths without judging her. Listen, if your mother had had the abortion, we wouldn't have to sit through this stupid assembly. <laughs> We see her steal. So because my grade book has disappeared, I'm gonna count on you to reconstruct it. Lie. Hey, I think B. I thought it was more like B minus, maybe even C plus territory. No, because I did really well on the last quiz. Fall in love. Well, 
out of love, fall in love with someone else, and fall out of love with him too. And what's so great about this is that neither of these romantic relationships define Lady Bird's coming of age. Lady Bird, you can't lock the door. We have one bathroom. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Rocky mother-daughter relationships are par for the course in stories about girlhood development. But the film's just and loving way of seeing shows us that there's complementarity between the women, not just conflict. Scenes that start with a fight, end with deep connection, so infuriated and vice versa oh it's perfect blocking visually reinforces the women's complementarity they're both on the cusp of a new life stage with lady bird imagining what her life will become while marion imagines what her life could have been the film's just and loving way of seeing lady bird extends to a moment of great moral and developmental significance the morning after a rough night out Lady Bird has a divinely inspired epiphany that changes the ways that she sees herself, her name, and her mother. Hi, Mom and Dad. It's me, Christine. It's the name you gave me. It's a good one. Hey, Mom. Did you feel emotional the first time that you drove in Sacramento? Okay, Hunter. You were right. Lady Bird is pretty awesome. Bingo. But it's still frustrating that compelling stories about brown and black girls' lives just don't receive the same level of critical attention or celebration of complexity that's given to films about white girlhoods. So if there's one thing that I've learned from rewatching Lady Bird, it's that more of us need to adopt a just and loving way of seeing complex girlhoods of color, both on and off screen.